I woke up and before my eyes were even open, I just remember it being extremely warm. I looked at the foot of my bed and my curtains from the floor to the ceiling on fire. I scanned my head to the left around, my bookshelf's on fire, my dresser's on fire, my shoes are on fire, and for whatever reasons, my bed just happened to not catch on fire. And so I remember getting out there into the hallway and it was hell, the temperature, the heat, the smoke, the smell, every sense was literally on fire. Thankfully, all four of my roommates ended up making it out of the house, but I ended up not. I don't say that I gave up. I remember being very okay in that moment with that being that as I saw my roommates get out of the place and I was like, okay. And everything went black. Rob had suffered one of the larger burns I saw in my uh, early career. Although he came in, you know, with a breathing tube and it was a long time uh, in his, uh, you know, many months stay that any of us was able to talk to him, we all connected with him immediately because he was young and we were not sure he was going to uh, survive his injuries. When his care was further along and the breathing tube came out and we, we met him, uh, we saw how big a personality he had, and uh, uh, we were able to participate in a, in a more personal level in his uh, struggle to, uh, to recover. It took the whole effort of our entire burn community to help Rob get better, but then he, he left the hospital and uh, you know, rejoined his own community. And I remember the first time I actually walked by my own strength outside of my room and, and the nurses were there at the L desk and, and the technicians were, were running around and everyone stopped and looked at me and they, they started clapping and cheering. And it was, just a, it was just a win. It was the smallest win. I took five steps, but it was, the, it was a marathon. Like I needed to sleep afterwards. We all won. Like we all walked right then. Like we all succeeded. I wasn't by myself. And it made recovery bearable. It made being in this horrible existence, this horrible scenario of my life, somewhat more manageable because I wasn't doing it by myself. One of the things that makes him most uh, endearing to us is how much he's given back to the burn community. Uh, he participates in burn survivor groups and uh, you know, tells his own story as, uh, so he can be an inspiration to others who are you know, earlier on in their same struggle. You know, what kind of resilience do, did Rob show? Uh, what kind of determination do people need to survive a major burn injury? I, I think that many people are able to do it only because they have seen other people do it before them. Rob speaks personally to people with recent burn injury and shares his uh, story of how he got through it. And I think without Rob relating that to the newcomers and people who were burned longer ago having related that to Rob, people wouldn't, wouldn't have the will or the hope to make it. Before the pandemic and everything hit, every month I was coming down here to talk to new survivors. I wanted people to know things that I wish I had known that first year when I was just not listening to anybody. I wanted a place to couch all of these emotions and these feelings and when you're healing, people ask you how you're doing. And the answer is, I don't know. Because I don't know. Because I feel so many different things at once. I feel the gratitude. I feel the anger. I feel the, the missed opportunities. I feel the, the overwhelming love and attention and all of these things that ended up going in of the course of my healing process. Like, I love everyone that's on that floor. From the doctors, to the techs, to the, the therapist. Like I said, down to housekeeping, everyone was so sweet and really made me feel like I was the only person when I knew I wasn't the only person. Mm -hmm.